All right, so this whole section is aromatic reactions. And then I think today we're just going to have time to get started into the electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. So, so far in this class, uh, we've done substitution. We did SN1, SN2. That stood for what? Substitution nucleophilic first order, nucleophilic second order. Uh, these ones, it's EAS reactions now, so they're electrophilic substitution. They're a little bit different. So, electrophilic aromatic substitution, or EAS for short. All right, there are five reactions in this set here that you're going to have to know. Um, they all kind of work the same way. And in general, what we're going to do is have benzene in a reaction. And if you think back to the SN1, SN2 stuff, our reagent was always a nucleophile. And then our substrate was an electrophile. We're flipping that now. So, <laughs> yeah, because it's OCHEM, right? So now the benzene is going to be at the nucleophile, and the reagent is going to be the electrophile. So we're going to have some electrophile it's going to react with. And then what we're going to do is we're going to trade out one of the H's for whatever the electrophile is. And then we're going to have H plus as a side product if we're worrying about mass balance here. OK. So the five reactions, so basically what I like to do here is we do the five reactions and then we do the mechanism for all five reactions with some discussion as we go along as well. And then we have to go with uh, what happens when, when we have multiple substitutions happening at once. And that's pretty much what this whole chapter is about. All right, so uh, five reactions starting from benzene. So first reaction. Uh, this is going to be uh, halogenation, so it's going to be X2, and X2 can be chlorine or bromine, so Cl2 or Br2, and this does require a catalyst of FeX3. They need to match. So if you want to do the bromination, it's FeBr3. If you want to do the chlorination, it's FeCl3. If you mix it up, then you will get mixed products. And what this does, it trades out H for whatever X is. You may notice here that this is not a way for fluorinations or, I or putting iodine on there. We have other ways to do that, which we will cover towards the end of the semester. We'll come back to benzene chemistry later in the semester. We'll see it then. All right, uh, the one that we're doing in lab uh, this semester pretty nasty reaction, but it's fun to do regardless, is nitration. This is done with HNO3 and H2SO4. They are both concentrated. And this is nitration. You're going to put a nitro group on there. All right, so just uh, labeling things here. This first one here is halogenation. Next one here is nitration. All right, uh, the next one here, we're going to get a sulfonic acid. That, and the way we do this one is fuming H2SO4. Uh, basically what fuming H2SO4 is, is that it's so concentrated that there is a green gas floating on top of it. It's so concentrated. And that gas is actually SO3. You may see it written this way, but that's basically fuming uh, sulfuric acid. I don't know if you guys ever watched the, the cool uh, chemistry YouTube video out there. There's actually a video out there where the guy, guy shows you how to make fuming nitric acid and then the reaction of fuming nitric acid with nitrile gloves. It, it, it actually uh, causes nitrile gloves to burst into flames. So, <laughs> good times. All right, the last two here uh, kind of go in the same category. Uh, this first one here is 
if you have an alkyl halide and an aluminum trichloride catalyst, what it's going to do is it's going to substitute whatever R is onto your ring. That. And then the next one here is we have if we have an acid halide instead. So notice here we have an alkyl halide. Here we, here we have an acid halide. Same catalyst. That's going to put the acyl group on there instead. Like that. All right, uh, naming stuff here again. This, this one with here was sulfonation. And I want to add a little, com or you can add a comment to your notes here that uh, sulfonation is reversible with water. If you treat that compound with water, it will go back to benzene. That'll be useful in the problems coming up. All right, uh, th this one here is called an alkylation. And this one is called an acylation. We have that word again, acyl, that's referring to carbonyl compounds. Uh, collectively, these two reactions are often referred to as the Friedel-Crafts reactions. So Friedel-Crafts. We used to actually do this lab here at CSN. Uh, I, I did have to cut a lab, though, to make space for the lab that we're doing next week. That's the reduction of vanillin acetate. So I, I, I thought that was the most boring lab that we had, so I took it out. So only got the fun ones in. All right. Are there any questions so far about this? All right, so uh, in general, when you're looking at the way that benzenes react, they do not undergo additions very easily. And it has to go back to what we we're talking about with aromaticity stability. Um, if you have a benzene compound undergo a addition, you lose aromaticity. So uh, let's take a look at that here. So I think I mentioned to you guys before that when they were first trying to figure out the structure of benzene, uh, they did know from uh, combustion analysis, it had a formula of C6H6 but it was always coming up negative for the bromine test. So BR2, you guys remember doing that test last semester? So if, uh, bromine has a brown color to it, orange brown color. If you add it to an alkene, it'll turn colorless. That means that the bromine added to the alkene. So I wanna go ahead and draw this product. And this is a anti-addition, so we're gonna get that. So uh, looking at the product there, is that product, is that aromatic, non-aromatic, or anti-aromatic? It's non-aromatic. Yeah. Uh, these carbons now are sp3 hybridized, so this is non-aromatic. We don't have the full 360 of pi bonds now. Uh, because of the fact that it's non-aromatic, that makes that the, the delta G for this reaction, or the activation energy in particular, is very, very large. So just to summarize here, the aromaticity is lost. This reaction has a very high delta G double dagger. That was activation energy. So these reactions are not favored. So instead, what we're going to be doing is substitutions rather than additions. All right, so I have a generic mechanism here. I think I'll just go ahead and uh, talk about the generic mechanism today, and then I think that's where we'll call it for the day. All right, so uh, instead we get, in, so no addition reactions here. We only get substitutions. So we get the EAS reactions. So the, the cool part about this is that, you know, yeah, we are going to go over all five mechanisms. That's not necessarily the cool part for you guys. But the part that I think is kind of interesting is that they all have the same mechanism. The only thing different is how the electrophile is formed. All right, so here we're going to go ahead and st uh, start with benzene. 
And then for any of the five reactions, you're going to have an electrophile around. For most of them, what will happen is we have the two things. I usually have two reagents on the arrows for those reactions. Let me uh, bring that page back up. So for a lot of these, what will happen is that these two will react, and they'll make your E+. Plus. And then after that, everything else is the same after that step for this mechanism. And we'll, we'll, we'll hit all those details next time. Um, I would probably put aromatics on there. And then I, we did go over the five reactions, so I could put that on there as well. Um, if you're studying, though, I, I will not put a dye substitution on there because we haven't covered it yet. And that requires a little bit of talking first before I test you on it. All right, so first things first, this will attack. And what will happen here is uh, in order for this reaction to even work, there must be a strong electrophile or the ring is activated. So we need a strong electrophile or benzene is activated by a, all right, so what I mean by activated is that it's become more reactive. So what do you guys think? Uh, based off the arrow push here, which type of group would make it more reactive? Would it be a donating group or a withdrawing group, do you think? Donating group. Yep, a donating group makes this thing more reactive as a nucleophile. So in order for this to react, in this kind of reaction, you must have a very strong electrophile or the benzene is activated by an EDG. We'll, we'll see more of that next time about uh, different groups and whatnot. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and draw the result of this. So plus charge here, I'm arbitrarily choosing that carbon to go with the plus. And we get that. All right, and now we get the fun part with the resonance. And yes, I will be looking for resonance if you were to draw this here. This is kind of what I had the templates for, but I'm just gonna do it by hand for this one. But we'll, we'll use those handouts for sure next time. All right, and then we have our E and H on there. Go ahead and do it again. So now this moves here. Oops, wrong arrow color. Remember the general idea with resonance is you uh, chase the positive. So you wanna keep pushing arrows towards positive centers to propagate your resonance. Okay, boom. All right. So all of these right here, uh, th all of this here, that's referred to as the arenium ion. They are resonance stabilized. So this is the arenium ion. Okay. Uh, the very last step here is something will act as a base and will deprotonate, giving us back our benzene. So grab the H, boom. Like that. Okay. So one of the things I've been emphasizing to you guys is that we've seen all the arrow pushes already. I recommend that you see this as pieces of other reaction that we've covered already, so it doesn't feel like it's all new material to you guys. So what other reaction did exactly this first step? We've seen reactions before that did that. That was what addition of HBr to alkenes, right? Did that push? It was the double bond would go out, grab something, and we saw that with addition of HBr, addition of Br2. And then what do you think for the last step here? The base grabs that, gets a new double bond. That was E1 that did that. Yep, so uh, when you think about this here, so we have addition to a pi bond here, same kind of arrow push. We get the positive charge. The big difference here now is we have resonance here. And then the very last step here, it's gonna do an elimination, like an E1. I don't wanna call it an E1 because it's technically not an E1, but it is the same arrow push. Okay, so uh, 
a little bit about the energy of this here, and then we'll, this will be where we stop. So let's do energy diagram, of course. So on the y-axis, we have energy. On the x, we have the reaction progress. Okay. So based off of this arrow pushing here, how many bumps in the reaction should there be? So the question I have for you guys again here are, is, are, are these actually steps in the reaction? No, they're just resonance. So this is all resonance of the, of the intermediate. There's actually only two steps. One step, two step. Two bumps in your reaction uh, diagram. So the first activation energy is very large, and the second one is really small. So something like this. I'm making them equal energy here just for the sake of discussion. But we're starting off with benzene plus electrophile gives us a benzene with electrophile attached. And we're going to go ahead and call this delta G double dagger. This is where the arenium ion goes in the middle. And then this little teeny little bump there is delta G double dagger two. So one and two, two steps. Anybody want to take a, take a, a guess as to why there's such a difference between the two? Like why is delta G one so much larger than two? What's that? Yeah, that's exactly right. So here uh, we're doing that addition step first. That's disrupting the aromaticity. So uh, this compound, uh, this arenium ion, yeah, it's resonance stabilized, but it's technically non-aromatic now because we have the sp3 carbon there. So the first step here, we're disrupting aromaticity. That's why the first energy here is so large. And then we're getting aromaticity back. That's why that's so small. So uh, here, uh, the, to summarize, delta G, Double dagger one is usually much greater than delta G double dagger two. And that has to do with losing aromaticity than getting it back. Then restoration. Uh, this huge energy of activation here is typically why you need a strong catalyst of some sort to make this reaction go. Because if you were to just take benzene and just put, just put just Br2 in there, nothing happens. But as soon as you get the FeBr3 in there, that reacts with bromine, makes a very strong electrophile, which then reacts with your benzene. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do something else first to get it to react. You kinda have to go to, into getting it to go. They don't wanna react. Um, as a little aside note here, if you actually look at a lot of biological compounds in there, they have a lot of benzene incorporated out throughout all of biology. And I believe the reason why is because they're so stable and they're not gonna react. All right, this is a good stopping point. Uh, next time what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through all the reactions in detail. So it's gonna be a lot of arrow pushing. Definitely bring these back tomorrow, or sorry, Thursday, and we're gonna hammer through these. So we're gonna go through each reaction mechanism and then we're gonna go over what happens if you, if you already have a group on there where does the next group go? And that's when you're, uh, knowing your donating groups versus withdrawing groups is gonna, co gonna come into play. It works out that whatever's on their first dictates where the next group goes, whether or not it's withdrawing or donating. But that's, yeah, more next time. To be continued. So also speaking of next time, what else is happening next time again? Just a reminder. Quiz. There's a quiz. So what do you think is gonna be on there, on that quiz? Everything? Yeah, so I, I probably won't. Ha I probably will not have a mechanism on there because, uh, at least for the EAS reactions, because all we've had so far is the generic reaction. We haven't given the, did the anything specific yet. Um, I do think it's, uh, we, all the diene stuff is on. It's fair game though, right? We have one two versus one four. We have Dills Alder, and then I'll probably put a, a synthesis question on there too, just for fun. You got you guys love those kind of questions, right? Make sure we get our get our practice in. All right. So let's go ahead and stop here.